Hey everybody, it's me, IB Crazy. In this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about SWR. Frequently, when we talk about antennas, the subject of SWR comes up, and we know that a lower SWR is better, and a 1.0 is technically perfection, but we rarely talk about what it really means and what it really looks like. Well, SWR, or more appropriately, VSWR, stands for Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. And what this is, it's an, imp an impedance measurement to verify that your antenna is at the proper impedance to work with your system. Now this is expressed as a ratio of the amount of power coming out of the antenna versus how much is being reflected back at the transmitter. And yes, this applies to both transmit and receive antennas, but of course you have to put power into the antenna to measure it properly. Standing wave? What's that? Well, of course we are probably familiar with traveling waves. I mean, when the signal leaves the antenna, it will travel its way to the receiver. That's a traveling wave. Well, what's a standing wave? Well, a standing wave is a wave that appears to stand in place and only rise and fall without moving. Well, sure, it's moving, it just doesn't appear that way. And that standing wave is what we use to measure this antenna. But we can't really see that here. We can't exactly see an electrical signal. So why don't we step outside into my yard and I'll show you what this looks like with some common components and you can even test this at home if you like. Okay, so first we're gonna talk about a traveling wave. You're probably familiar with a traveling wave if you ever used one of these to wash your car or water your garden because inevitably the hose gets stuck on something and it kinks. And what's the first thing you do? Do you walk back to the kink and try to pull it out? No, you shake the hose and send a traveling wave down to the kink and hope it takes it out. Notice that the slower I go, the bigger the wavelength. If I go fast, the wavelength is very small and you can watch the wave travel right down the hose. Now we'll go off to my backyard and I'll show you what a standing wave looks like. Okay, now for a standing wave. A standing wave is indeed traveling, but it appears to stand in place as opposed to traveling from one end to the other. And to simulate this, I took a static cord from my climbing rope bag, tied one end to the bumper of my RV and the other end to my deck and tried to make it as tight as I can. So uh, obviously my deck and my RV aren't going to move, but uh, yeah, my knot's probably gonna slip. But uh, hopefully I'll have enough tension to show you. As I shake this rope, you will notice that the wave doesn't appear to move. It appears to just stand in place. But that wave is indeed traveling because I am shaking or sending a signal from here, which would be my transmit side, and up there would be my, say, antenna side. So to see what this looks like in SWR form, what is my SWR? I need to know what is being reflected back at me from my antenna side. And to do this, we'll just do a simple impulse. If I shake once, you see, the, you see the wave, it goes up to the end and then comes down back at me, but at reduced amplitude. That's low SWR. Perfect SWR would be that wave never came back. It would see nothing. Again, here's what I'm talking about, a reflected wave. Up, down, up, back, up, back. That is the reflected signal being reflected back at the transmitter, me, from my antenna, the post, again. Same thing. That is what makes it difficult to create a standing wave. Because as I shake this, if I don't shake it at the right frequency, that wave comes back and gets me and makes it hard for me to shake the rope. So the more input I have to give to the transmitter, my arm, to actually get that standing wave to happen is my SWR. If I have good SWR, it's almost effortless. If I have low SWR, that feedback coming down the line makes it very hard for me to hit resonance. Okay, so SWR, we know what it is, we know how it works, so obviously the antenna with the lowest SWR is best, right? Nah, not quite. This antenna and this antenna have the same SWR, but they're obviously very different antennas. So if we are only looking at SWR, we couldn't tell the difference. What makes these different is their radiation plots. This is a long range directional antenna, and this is an omnidirectional coverage all around you antenna. 
In fact, if SWR was the only thing we cared about, we'd simply run these on our transmitters and receivers. This is a dummy load. It's not an antenna, it's just a resistor. But it has perfect SWR from 2 megahertz all the way up to 6 gigahertz. So the reason we don't run these is because SWR doesn't mean everything. It's simply one measurement. What matters is a combination of factors. Radiation plot, SWR, and what your needs actually are. In fact, SWR is most often used as a deceptive tactic and many manufacturers out there just flat out lie about what their SWR is because it's a simple number and we all know less is better, right? Well, why would they do that? I mean, can't somebody just screw it on to a device and say, hey, you have poor SWR, you were lying. Not really. Because, well, a device to test SWR isn't cheap. In fact, my vector network analyzer is more, worth more than the RV you just saw me tie the rope to. These aren't cheap, and thus the people that have these are typically your manufacturers, so obviously we would have something to gain by showing you our dishonest competitor's antenna on our system. So. Yeah, there's, it's really easy to cover that all up with doubt and say one's better than the other. So when you're looking at an antenna and comparing and somebody makes a claim that theirs is better, ask, where's your proof? Prove it to me. Show me, not on the SWR, but show me your radiation plot and show me your test results. Because after all, it's not just the SWR that makes the antenna, but the radiation plot, the SWR, and your needs for that antenna to perform. I might be crazy and keep them flying.